What up, peeps and peepets? Morbtron back today with more Destiny 2, and today is September 25th, 2018, which means it's a Tuesday and a reset day. There's some new stuff added this week. Nothing huge major, though. We do have a new Crucible mode that is going to be the featured weekly play mode, and after this week, it'll go and rest in competitive. It's called Breakthrough. I don't know much about it as I haven't played it yet, but what I do know is that you have a defending team and an attacking team. Attacking team wants to crack open the defending team's vault. And, of course, the defenders want to stop the attackers. I'm assuming it's round-based and probably winner of three matches, I'm assuming. I don't know. Expect a video on that in the next couple of days when I get time to check that out. As far as the Nightfall goes this week, we do have a new option to choose from. The Corrupted, which was added last week as a strike after uh, we were able to, uh, well, after a team took down Last Wish. So that's pretty cool. We can get a pulse rifle from this strike. Can't wait to get my hands on it. I, myself, am a pulse rifle aficionado. Then we have Inverted Spire, which can give you a ship, a rather lackluster looking ship, if I remember correctly. Then Strange Terrain offers a year one rolled rocket launcher that has cluster bombs, all that other sort of thing. Personally, if I have time to, and a group to do it, I'm going to be farming the Corrupted to try to get that Pulse Rifle. But as far as other weekly stuff, we'll go out and check Tess Everest here momentarily. But this week, the Drifter wants us to uh, do it. Interesting Drifter. Um, I don't think you want a bunch of Guardians to go do it. Anyway, um, you have to earn 12 points in Gambit. Wins add 3 points, losses add 1. So you can either lose 12 games, you can win 4 games, or you can do any sort of random stuff in between. Just play Gambit, and you don't have to do anything special. Eventually, you will get your powerful gear from him. His daily stuff today happens to be the same one it was yesterday. Um, defeat 3 or more enemies with a rocket launcher in Gambit. Guardian multi-kills are worth extra points. Kind of a interesting one to get, because you need power ammo to do it. Kind of a pain, if you ask me. But we're going to go check out Tess Everest, and I promise she has some very, very, very good stuff to sell this week, if you have the bright dust for it. Uh, we're going to stop real quick here at Banshee, see what mods he's selling today on reset day. 17 minutes past reset time. Currently, as I'm recording this, we have Ordnance Mod and Radar Tuner. If you want your grenades back faster, there you go. If you want your radar to immediately return when you stop aiming down sights, there you go. Can be good for snipers, scout rifles, pulse rifles, that sort of thing. In the Crucible, in PvE, radar tuner, kind of pointless. But, Tess, this week, in her Prismatic Matrix, don't forget to buy the Prismatic Matrix bounty. We have all mine, if you want to collect some moats. And then brag about them, and drop them on the floor. There you have it. You can do a little stupid dance with them, showing them off, and you broke them. Yep. And we have the sneak attack weapon ornament for the colony. Um, I think it's the colony. I can't see it right now. Or we have loaded dice weapon ornament for the... Um, Hazard of the Cast. I always forget the name of that weapon. Good auto rifle from Gambit. Weapon ornament for that. We have Denial Dance. Kind of a weird dance. Not really a fan of it, but I'm sure since I'm not really a fan of it, this is the thing that I will get from the Prismatic Matrix this week. Uh, then we have Swift Song Sparrow. Looks just like a sparrow. Nothing real special about it there, just a legendary sparrow. We have a spectral circuit shell, ghost shell that, um, a little bit of a haircut. Missing a couple, couple little triangle deals. We have the cordial diamond shell, another kind of weird shaped shell. Not really a fan, but meh. Just a sparrow, or just a sparrow, just a ghost shell. We have another sparrow called the Battle Shrike. Now there's an exotic version of this one that's kind of like uh, broken and rusty and full of like jagged stuff. 
from the, uh, I don't know, it looks like it's, it's from the, uh, the, 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 the fallen people. I brain fart. We have beastly projection. Gives you a little, like, dragon face. You can see it right there. I can't preview it. It won't let me. Because reasons. Then we have lucky shot. Is the final emote. This week from the Prismatic Matrix. Another weird little dance. And this week, as far as what she's just selling, you can buy poultry petting if you like to pet your chicken. And we have the Awaken the Warmind if you like to pretend like you're typing on multiple holographic laptops. There you have it. We have the I Can't Pronounce This Word Sparrow. That, um, I don't know, it's kind of shaped weird. There's a couple of these out now. If you're a fan of those, fantastic. If not, eh, don't buy it. And we have Luna Dove, which is more of a standard-looking sparrow with a really wide wings on it to make sure that you get caught in every little doorway or every rock or every tree out in the environment. Temperance Moon, a new ship design for Forsaken. Pretty cool, pretty unique. And then we have the Jade Worm, big number in Roman numerals. I'm not going to try to pretend I know what that means. And, uh, yeah, that's a Warmind ship. Two different ghost shells to choose from if you want to random roll your ghost. There you have it. We have the Endless Loop for the ACD slash O feedback fences for the Titan. Add some glowy effects. Makes them look really cool and stand out. We have the Machinist Trove weapon ornament for the Tractor Cannon. If you want your Tractor Cannon to be, I guess, less standout-ish and not like glowy white or the other weapon ornament for it that I can't remember what it looks like right now. We have the Silver Bullet weapon ornament for Crimson. If you want it to look super shiny and special. There you have it. We have Fallen Arrival for Transmat Effect. You look like a Servitor. Then you kind of like fall down on like an ether, glittery stuff. We have Pink Class Sigil. Like a pink Class Sigil. There you have it. Mine is a Lion because I am a Titan. 44 Steel is a new shader for Forsaken. If you're a fan of copper and black, you will really enjoy this shader. As you can see, it is very copper with a little bit of black. Looks pretty decent. A lot of copper, though. Probably could use more black. Anyway, then we have Bumblebee as well. If you're a fan of yellow, probably like that one. That is that. Now, the other thing this week is that we have week three of the rotation of the uh, Dreaming City. So we're going to go zoom over there quick and check that out. Okay, so we're at the fast travel location. The first thing you'll notice is that there is Taken energy leaking out of everywhere. There is Taken balls, lights just floating around, spewing their darkness absolutely everywhere. More rocks are floating. It is generally chaotic. If you look at your map, you'll notice that Petra... Oh, I stopped in a bad spot. Stopped in a bad spot. You'll notice that Petra is in the uh, the higher level area this week, and I'm going to show you where to go. So we're just going to go through this little cave area here. And uh, she's kind of hidden. She's kind of hidden this week. Uh, of course, the blight or the corruption for Dreaming City is at its most severe. So I'm assuming she's kind of taking cover and letting us handle her dirty work. But if you immediately take a left as you enter the zone, she's right there. But if you just run into the zone all willy-nilly, you will run right past her and not notice her. And of course, there is another mission this week uh, called the Dark Monastery. She'll have some line of spiel to tell you about stuff. Um, so if you're interested in that, definitely give that a listen. And uh, we've got the regular stuff this week other than Dark Monastery, which is brand new. We've got the do daily bounties to get powerful gear. Then we have the Ascendant Challenge and the Gateway Between Worlds, which is give an offering to, or get an offering to the Oracle by uh, completing the Blind Well stuff. Now you notice here that the third weekly bounty is no longer here. And you do not need to do three weekly bounties to get the powerful gear from Petra. Only two. Remember that they changed it so that the offering to the Oracle lands in your Pursuits tab now, instead of in your regular consumables inventory, so it has less of a chance of getting sent to your Postmaster. 
and potentially getting lost. We have it. Then the daily bounties, again, we'll just rotate because they're daily bounties. Today we have heroic public events, the uh, Chamber of Starlight in the Dreaming City, which is the lost sector in this third high level zone that we're currently in, that Petra's in. Public events, killing 65 dudes, and doing four patrols. That is it for this week. I'm sure there will be many secrets to discover in the Dreaming City this week. It is hinted at by Bungie that some sort of new thing is kicking off this week. That uh, since it's only now 28 minutes into reset day, I don't know. I don't know what it could be. We'll find out. We'll find out together. But if this video helped you out, if you enjoyed it, please leave a like. A positive rating is always greatly appreciated. Thank you all so very much for your support. Um, I recently hit 4,000 subscribers, and I have nobody to thank for it but every single one of you that watches my videos. So thank you. Thank you very much. Don't forget to have a good day, everybody. And I'll catch you all next time.